Hi, now I want to solve a problem which is printing 2D array in a spiral form. Consider this example. 2D, in this 2D array, I want to print numbers starting from 1 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 16, 15, 14, 13, 9, 5, 8, 6, 7, 11, 10. So starting with uh, the first element and I'm going to stop here at 10. This is where the spiral is ending for me in this particular example. So when you look at this problem, there's a common pattern that is being followed irrespective of number of rows and columns, whether it is equal or not, a common pattern is followed. That is, when you start from the first index, you move to your your right. That means you're printing the first row. When you're printing the first row, uh, uh, your row index is constant, but your column index changes. That is what is the representation here. But when you're printing again the column from top to bottom, your row index changes because you're printing the same elements of the column. And again, when you're printing the row from uh, right to left, you're decrementing the column index and again row index is constant. For printing the column from bottom to top, you have to uh, decrement the row index again because it's the first column of and all the different rows and row index uh, is decrementing and column index is constant. So basically this is the whole logic for this problem. Uh, so every uh, printing every row and column is a one single loop like one while loop will print the entire row the other while loop will print the column the other so the pattern repeats till the spiral ends so now the logic is printing all these numbers but we have to make sure how many times this spiral has to be repeated there should be a check the check is um, check can be decided using this logic, deciding the number of spirals any given 2D array has. So in this example, my number of rows is 4 and number of columns is 4. So when they both are equal, I'm just going to divide rows by 2. You can take rows or columns, but I'm taking rows by 2, which is uh, 2 by 2 is 1. Uh, sorry, 4 by 2 is uh, 2. It means that we are going to have two spirals and this outer loop this outer loop is going to execute two times so n decides the total number of spirals and count is like the keeping track of the number of spirals and the logic I explained here is implemented using this four loops and um, this is how I'm going to print all the uh, elements in the spiral form but Apart from this main logic, I also want to check a negative case where there could be an empty array as well. So how do I know a empty, uh, an array is empty? Like I have my, uh, my function takes input parameters as number of rows and number of columns. If these are equal to zero, then that means that my array is empty. So that is the negative check that I'm going to do at the beginning of uh, my... Um, my program and then I'm going to uh, you know uh, calculate number of spirals and then loop through loop so many times and then start printing a row a column and then a row and by decrementing the pointer and then a column by decrementing the row pointer so uh, so this is how exactly this is done uh, but what could be the complexity for this problem because I am visiting every element only once, like I'm is visiting one once, two once, three once, four once. It's like just visiting them and printing them. So I'm I'm not taking any extra space. I'm only uh, visiting every element. So how do I know how many elements are in the array using number of rows and number of columns? If you multiply these two, you'll get how many elements are there in that particular array. So for this particular array, it's a 4 by 4 matrix. So we have 16 elements in it. 
so our complexity is in 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 terms of number it is 16 but to generalize it it's o of r c r into c i mean it's a product of r into c this r could be 2 or column could be 3 or it could be any number so in general the complexity to the solution is r into c by, uh, by this uh, solution you are going to print the numbers in the spiral form thank you